Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us as we continue our Bible study on Bible prophecy. We continue to pray for you, your family, your friends, and loved ones, and we are grateful that we could convene together here today to continue our study on this very important topic. We are going to begin by opening up in prayer, so if you'll pray with me, we will greatly appreciate that. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful that you bless us that we could convene together here today to just talk more about your word, to learn more about you. We pray, Lord, that you will bless everything that is said and done. Continue to guide us, lead us, direct us as we go through this Bible study today. Help us to focus on Jesus Christ and to learn what is going on, what is going to be happening in the future, which is not very far from us now for the church and for the nation and everything that's going on around the world. So we just thank you and ask that you will take full control. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. We do it all in the mighty name of Jesus, and we say amen. Now then, we are going to begin by looking at our, our timeline, which is what we normally go through at this time. Uh, we do this because we believe that the church, the Christians in the church should know what's going to be happening in the future. So we go through this timeline. We want you to have it embedded in your mind and in your head so that you could really know what to expect as we continue this Christian journey. So if you look at the timeline of future events from A through C, this is the, the church age. This is when Jesus started the church. If you look at letter A, he started the church uh, in Acts chapter 2. This is right around 33 A.D., um, so you could see this in Acts chapter 2, and the church started and went right on until we're almost at letter C now. Uh, that's almost at the end of the 2000 year period. And that is uh, the next event that will be happening, which is the rapture of the church. This is when Jesus Christ will come down in the clouds, and he will not come all the way down the earth. He'll come in the clouds. He'll take call this church up off the earth. He will take us back to heaven where we will be in heaven uh, for at least uh, seven years. That's let us see through E. And there we will have a marriage ceremony of the church with Jesus Christ. And we will also stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ where Jesus will literally marry the church. On earth at that time, let us see through E, will be a seven-year tribulation period where there will be... Uh, wars and rumors of wars, there'll be famines, pestilences, diseases, earthquakes. It will be a terrible time going on for seven years. More than half the people on the earth are going to die. The rest of them will come out of the tribulations uh, where we get to letter E. The rest of them will be saved when they come out of the tribulation. But Jesus will come back, letter E, this is the second coming of the of Jesus Christ, or what some call the second phase of the second coming, and that's fine. He will come back, and he will bring his church back with him. You and I will come back with him, and all of the holy angels will come back with him as well. You can read all of that in uh, Matthew 24, Mark 13, uh, Luke 21, also Revelation chapter 19, and Zechariah chapter 14. All of these cover the second coming of Jesus Christ. So uh, that's that red arrow that you see there uh, where Jesus will be returning with us. On the earth at that time will be the Antichrist and the revived Roman Empire. Uh, they will be fighting and they'll be taking over the world. So they will see Jesus and all of us coming. They will begin a war with him, shooting at him. He's going to wipe them out and he will uh, go land on the Mount of Olives. That's Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 4. We will all land down with him. He will uh, build a temple, set up the millennial temple. At that time, he will also throw the false prophet and the Antichrist into hell. He will lock Satan up for 1,000 years, and that's when we will begin the 1,000-year millennial reign with those people who came out of the tribulations uh, alive. That's Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. And they will populate the millennium. We will be teaching those people and training them, and we will be working with them for 1,000 years under Jesus Christ. Uh, after the 1,000 year period is over, we will have the end of the millennial period. And uh, at that time, uh, there will be a last judgment. There will be a resurrection of all the people who have died and never accepted Christ or never walked with God. Those who are unsaved from the time of Adam all the way up to the end of the millennial period. And uh, at that time, 
they will be judged, they will be sentenced to hell fire, and uh, that's uh, what, we, what is called the great white throne judgment, Revelation chapter 20, verses uh, 11 and following. And uh, at that time, there'll be the, earth, hell will be put in, the, Hades will be put in the hell fire, Satan will be, resur will be let out of the abyss for a while. He will be put in the hell fire. Death will be put in the hell fire. And then we move on into eternity with Jesus Christ and God the Father. And of course the Holy Spirit and all of the heavenly hosts and all our friends and relatives. Where we will have eternal pleasure at the right hand of God. And that's Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11. So that's what's going to be happening. Now what we had been going through is let us see through E. We've been explaining what's going, what's going to be happening in the tribulation. What we are going to do today is go through the wars that's going to be taking place. There are nine of them. All of them will not take place during the tribulation period. Uh, seven of them will. One will take place at the end of the millennium. And one may or may not be taking place uh, in, in the tribulation. It probably started a little before, but we'll talk more about that. But we're going to move into those now. And talk about these uh, wars that's going to be taking place. There are nine of them, as we said. And we, what we did was give them names and uh, and we to help identify them. And we tried to put them in order, the order that they will occur. The first two uh, is somewhat controversial because we're not exactly sure when they will start. But this first one here is called the War of Extermination. This is found in uh, Psalm 83. And this war will be uh, several Arab countries that are surrounding Israel that will attack Israel. Uh, we believe this is going to be the next war that takes place. Uh, and this war will also lead to the second war that's going to take place which is the first war of Gog and Magog. And this is Russia itself. We went through this a couple of weeks ago, Gog and Magog. Sometimes it's called the Ezekiel 38 war. But this war will be the uh, Russia leading a coalition of Muslim nations. And uh, they will attack Israel. What will happen in the first war, the war of extermination, the Jews are going to win. Israel is going to win. So the Muslim nations are going to call on their natural ally, which is Russia. And they're going to come in with the first war of Gog and Magog. And we'll talk more about that. In fact, we're going to go through each and every one of them and give you a little bit more detail. We're just highlighting it right now so you can get a flavor of what's going to be happening and who these wars are. The third war is a conventional war of the tribulation. This is started with the Antichrist. This is the Antichrist coming on the scene now. And uh, this is set forth by Jesus with the seven seals, the first four seals and the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And uh, we will cover that a little bit more in detail. This war will escalate into the nuclear war, which will take place, which will cover the whole earth, really, the nuclear war itself. So, um, and of course, we'll be talking more about that as well. The fifth war is a different type of war because this war is going to be fought in heaven. This is a supernatural war uh, between Michael and his archangels and Satan and the demons. But we want to include all of the wars, even though this is not on earth, this is going to be in heaven. But we wanted to include all the wars so you could get a full picture of what's going to happen. We didn't want to exclude anything. The sixth war is a war against the Jews in the sense uh, this is when Satan will be kicked out of heaven and he'll uh, make a, a real strong attempt to wipe out all the Jews in the sense. And then the seventh war is the Middle East campaign, which the Antichrist is fighting to take over the whole world. This is what he's going to be doing. Uh, his role is to take the whole world over. And he will, but for a short while. The eighth war is the war that you probably heard about most of the time, which is the Battle of Armageddon. And uh, this is what people always hear about, the Battle of Armageddon. But actually, you'll see later on, it is really not going to be a Battle of Armageddon. Uh, but the people will join there anyway. And this final war is the war that, uh, the second Battle of Gog and Magog. This war won't take place until the end of the millennial period when Jesus let Satan out of the abyss for a small period of time. So these are the wars that's going to take place. Now what we are going to do now is go through each one of these wars and give you a little bit more information on them so that you could have a, a pretty good idea of the scriptures that relate to them 
and um, and know a little bit more about what's going to be happening. So the first one we have is found in uh, Ezekiel. Uh, the first one we have is uh, the wall of extermination. That's in Psalms 83. Psalm 83, uh, wall one. This is the first wall. Uh, and if you have your Bibles, you can read along with us. And this is the Psalm 83, verses 1 through 8. And here's what the psalmist wrote. By the way, the psalmist, most of the times they attributed it to David, King David, but this one was written by Asap. David did not write all of the psalms. He only wrote some of the psalms. This one is attributed to uh, Asap. Asap was a Levite who was uh, assigned by King David to uh, be a worship leader in the temple. But here's what he wrote. This is the Psalm of uh, Psalm 83, the, the, the War of Extermination. He said, Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult. Tumult is loud noises, clamoring. They're whooping it up. They're getting ready to attack Israel. Your enemies make a tumult. And those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel will be mentioned no more, be remembered no more. So this is this group of Arab nations that's going to attack Israel. They're getting ready to attack Israel now. And this is the statement that they're saying. You know, amazingly enough, in 2006, uh, there was Iranian legal, uh, an Iranian legal, uh, leader by the name of uh, uh, Mahmoud uh, Ahmadinejad. And Ahmadinejad made a statement that was closely resembled to what we were saying here. Ahmadinejad made this statement. He was talking to 4,000 Islamic leaders, Arab leaders, and here's what he said. He said, we must rise up as Muslims and wipe Israel off the face of the earth that their name may be forgotten forever. Very, very similar to what... Uh, very similar to what was said in the Bible in Psalms 83 when he said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. So you can see this, that's, uh, that's amazing. The prophecy itself is amazing because it was written thousands of years before. And here's Achman Adenijad saying the same thing uh, almost word for word. So we go to uh, verse 5 and they tell who these nations are going to be. Here are the nations, he said for, in verse 5, For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. And here are the nations, verse 6, The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gabal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Psalms 83 verses 1 through 8. Now, here he's naming the nations that's going to be attacking Israel. Again, this was written thousands of years ago. Now, these are the nations here, and you can see them in this little chart that we put forth here. Uh, on the left column is the Psalm 83 nations that are mentioned, and who's, and then the right column is the modern day is uh, name of these nations. We know exactly who they are. Most of them are Jordan, but let me just run through these and you can see who these are. The tents of Edom, that's southern, that's the southern portion of Jordan. The Ishmaelites, Saudi Arabia, and portions of Jordan. Moab, that's central Jordan. The Hagrites, northeast Jordan. Gabal, that's Lebanon. Ammon, Ammon is northwest Jordan. Amalek, southern Israel, Philistia, that's Gaza. Gaza today is where the terrorist group Hamas is from. And you got the inhabitants of Tyre, it's Lebanon. Then we have a terrorist group there called Hezbollah today. Assyria, that's Turkey, parts of Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. And the children of Oman, which is Jordan. So most of these are Jordan. If you look at all of these nations, most of you'll find Jordan, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and some of the Palestinian territories that are all going to be uh, uh, 
attacking Israel. And also there are parts of Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. That's at the bottom down there, but you see Assyria, that's Turkey, uh, Syria, and uh, parts of Turkey, parts of Syria, and parts of Iraq. These are the nations that's going to be attacking Israel. This is the first war. We believe this is the next war that's going to take place. When I say we, I'm talking about prophecy scholars and students of Bible prophecy such as myself. So this is what we believe that's going to be happening. These are the nations. We know this is going to happen, but we believe that uh, this is the first war. The next war will, that will happen. Now, this is doesn't have anything to do with the rapture. The church will be around. We will be here to see this most likely, unless God God sends Jesus to take the church off earth before this happens. But this is what's happening. Now we go to the second war. The second war itself is found. Uh, the second war is uh, is the war of Gog. The first war of Gog and Magog. So we can read about this in Ezekiel 38, verses 1 through 16 we have here. But let's just read, read through, uh, beginning verse 1. Now the word of the Lord, by the way, this, this one we went through before. We went through it in detail before, but we wanted to put them order, in order with all of the other uh, uh, wars so that you can see the, where, it, where it fits in. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshesh, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshesh, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses, and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmets. Goma, all of its troops, the house of Targoma from the far north, and all of its troops, many people with you. So what we have here then, what Ezekiel is prophesying, is that there will be a, coal a coalition of Russian nation, a coalition of uh, nations headed by Russia. That would, if that were to happen soon, that would be uh, the president of Russia today, and also uh, the Muslim nations, which we will explain to you who these are. If you look very carefully, you could see on the map who these Muslim, who these nations really are. Uh, if you look carefully at where the arrows are pointing right down into Israel. The, that's right in the center there. Israel is the center of the earth, Ezekiel 5 and verse 5. So you can look at these nations that are there, and uh, you'll see put over to the left or, or to the west, that covers Morocco, Algeria, Libya, all of those are put. And all, also uh, you may have some of the other smaller nations in there as well. And also you got the other nations such as Cush, and you got Ethiopia, which is also Kush. You got the Sudan and Ethiopia, all of these nations. You got Persia, which is Iran. You got Turkey. Now, Russia isn't shown on this map, but you could, but Russia will be heading them. That's Gog and Magog. Uh, also, you'll, you'll see the little white chart there on the left. That's the legend and let you know who these nations are. But um, when you look at these, uh, nations that you you'll see that the uh, Russia, Turkey, Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya, and maybe Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. You know, just recently, um, Morocco. In fact, just two or three days ago, uh, President Trump signed, got Morocco to sign a treaty, a peace treaty with Israel. Uh, they haven't really finalized it yet, but they agreed to it. So that was the only nation that's mentioned here that signed the treaty. There were some other treaties that President Trump got nations signed, the UAE or United Arab Emirates and also Bahrain and also the Sudan. Uh, that's another nation that's mentioned here as well. But you got the Sudan and Morocco, they've signed peace treaties with Israel. But I could tell you that these treaties are not going to stand. In fact, no treaty was, that was signed by any of Israel Muslim nations have ever stood the test of time. Nobody abides by these treaties. So what Morocco has agreed to sign, what the Sudan is going to sign, they will be broken as well. So uh, this is what we know that's going to happen based on the word of God. Now all of these nations are going to attack Israel. Okay, 
if you, this is Ezekiel 38. Sometimes we refer to it as the Ezekiel 38 nation. Now, if you want to see what's going to happen to the, these nations, then you would read Ezekiel chapter 39. God is going to wipe them out. You're going to see miracles of biblical proportion. There are going to be massive earthquakes. He could cause them to start fighting each other. There are going to be diseases that he's going to bring on them. There are going to be fire and hailstone, heavy rain. He's going to wipe them out miraculously, and that's going to put an end to that. One fourth of the people on, not, not at that point, one fourth will not die, but he's going to wipe out the Muslim nations. So if you want to know what's going to happen to the Muslim nations, that's going to pretty much wipe them out. Russia is also going to be badly devastated, even though there'll be some remains of Russia left because God has another purpose for them in the last and final war. But this is what's going to be happening. Now we come to war three. This is the conventional war of the tribulation, war three. Now, this is uh, the one that uh, uh, God brought out with the, Jesus brought out with the second seal. This is a four seal judgment, and uh, this is the second seal that's going to be coming out. This is uh, in Revelation chapter 6, verse 3 through, uh, verse 3 through 4, and verse 7 through 8. So now... Revelation chapter 6 and verse 3. When he opened the second seal. Now here's Jesus Christ opening these seals uh, and showing us what's going to be happening. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. Take peace from the earth. This is war. Okay. And that... People should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. So this is the Antichrist now coming to take peace from the earth. There were four horses of the apocalypse that correspond with the four sealed judgments. And the, the, there was a black, the white horse, which was the Antichrist, coming to conquer and to, as, a, as a conqueror. Then there was the red horse symbolizing war. The black horse itself symbol, symbolized famine. And, and then there is the pale horse, which was death. So each one of these horses represent one of the sealed judgments. And this second seal here was to take peace from the earth. This is war. This is the war three, and this is what's going to be happening here. Uh, let's continue reading here in the next part where he says, when he opened the fourth seal, now we jump down to the fourth seal because this is death, that's that field horse. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, come and see. Verse 8, so I looked and behold a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death. And Hades followed with him, and power was given to him over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. So now this is war going on. What is happening here is the Antichrist is fighting. He is fighting feverishly. He's fighting seriously because he wants to take over the whole world. And this is what he's doing. The problem is some of these nations don't want him to take over. They don't want to surrender their sovereignty to him. So what happens is this. Asia and uh, Africa and South America, though on those continents, the armies of those in those nations are going to fight back. They don't want to give up their uh, sovereignty to uh, a dictator like the Antichrist. In fact, Europe had already ruled and had colonized uh, those nations in Africa and Asia and South America. They have just broken uh, the shackles of colonialism, and uh, now they're not going to just give up their sovereignty to this European dictator. See, the Antichrist is heading ten nations, which is to revive the Roman Empire, and he's taking over the world. So they're going to fight back. And what's going to happen here? The Antichrist is going to prevail. There's no doubt about that. Revelation 13 and verse 7. He's going to win. He's going to take over. They won't stand a chance against the revived Roman Empire. But one-fourth of the people on the earth are going to die at that time. One-fourth of the people who are fighting here are going to be killed. Sad indeed. But this is the third war that's going to happen. And this is a conventional war. Uh, now that war is going to escalate into the next war, which will be a nuclear war. This is a nuclear war that's going to be coming up as a result of uh, the war, that's, the conventional war that was taken, that the Antichrist was doing, which is war number three. War four. 
Here we go. Revelation 8 and verse 7. The first sounded, and there was hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. So every, a third of the earth is burned up, third of the trees, third of the grass, all of this is burned up. So we know this is nuclear. There's nothing else that could happen that would destroy a third of the earth out of the nuclear war. And we have nine nations now that have nuclear uh, capabilities. So this is going to be happening uh, with the same Antichrist fighting and these nations fighting back against them to try to uh, keep uh, their sovereignty. So we have a third of the, another reason we notice the nuclear war because in Revelation chapter 16, we are told that there were loathsome and malignant souls that came over the people on the earth loathsome and malignant souls. This is uh, very consistent with radiation from nuclear activity. So we know right away then that we have uh, this kind of thing going on and, and heavy in this time, we have one third of the earth. So we had one fourth of the earth that died, one fourth of the people that leaves three fourths. Now we got one third of that three fourth left. That's another one fourth. So you got one fourth and one fourth fourth will give us one half and that's why we always come up with at least one half of the people on the earth are going to die within this tribulation period but there'll be more people dying as well this is just just these two wars uh, war three and four we know that one four uh, that one half is going to die but there'll be many more dying now we come to the fifth war the fifth war is, is a different war the fifth war is going to be a war that's in heaven Let's read this in Revelation 12 and verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 7 of 12 verse 7 to 9. What is happening here? Satan himself goes up to heaven. He still has access to heaven uh, at this point. He goes up, probably the last attempt to try to overthrow the throne of God. And when he does this, he's going to fight Michael and his angels. He's going to lose. He will have his demons with him. They're going to be kicked out of heaven. That's that fifth war that's going to take place. It's a supernatural war that's going to take place in heaven. Now, when Satan is kicked out of heaven, he's kicked back down to earth with all of his cohorts, his demonic followers. And guess what happens when he kicks, when he's kicked back down to earth? He is going to fight the Jews. This is going to lead into the sixth war against the Jews and the, and the saints. Those are those saints, of course, are those people who were converted during the tribulation. He's going to be fighting against them. He's going to come back down. Now, let's read this in Revelation 12 and verse 6. Satan is called a dragon. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to earth, he was kicked out of heaven, he was cast back down to earth. When the dragon saw that he had been cast to earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now, let's get some things clear here with what is going on here with this. Satan is kicked back down to earth. He persecutes the woman. When you read here where it talks about the woman, many churches will teach that the woman is the church. This is not true at all. The woman is not the church. And uh, actually, the woman is Israel. We know this for several different reasons. Uh, number one, the church is not even on earth at this time. That's number one. Now, also, it said the woman give birth to the male child. The church did not give birth to Jesus. Jesus started the church. So we know it can't be the church that we are talking about here. Also, another thing, in Revelation 12, it's in verse 5, it says, The woman gave birth to the child who became the ruler of all the nations. So again, Jesus, that's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus came out of Israel. He came from the tribe of Judah. Judah, which is one, which was one of the 12 boys, the 12 ch children of Israel. Jesus came through that line. 
So th th this is not talking about uh, the church at all. This is talking about Israel. This woman here is Israel. And it says, the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to a place where she is nourished for time, time, and half a time. Now, who was, a lot of people say the wings of a great eagle, that's an airplane, they think. That's not necessarily true. And it probably is not true. This is symbolic language or metaphorical language. He said the same thing when he brought the children out of uh, Egypt. In the Exodus, in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4, he said, I brought you out on the wings of eagles. So they, they certainly didn't have any airplanes then. So right away we know that this is not necessarily talking about airplanes. It possibly could, but most likely not. This is metaphoric language. So we know that Israel is going to be the, the remnants of Israel. By the way, in Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8, there are two-thirds of the Jews are going to die. Two-thirds are going to be killed right around this time. That leave one-third left. That one-third is called the remnants of Israel. Those are the ones that Jesus is going to save. And he's going to miraculously bring them away from the Antichrist. He's going to take them to a place of safety. When he said, two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to take place where she is nourished for time, times, and half a time. So he's going to take them to a place. We believe this place to be uh, Petra in Jordan. Petra is a box canyon that's found in Jordan. It's beautiful there. Nice, beautiful carvings, miraculous carvings in the mountainsides there. But we believe this place to be Petra where the Jews are going, the remnants of the Jews, which is only one third left. So he's going to bring them into Jordan. And we know this from uh, Daniel chapter 11 because the, in Daniel chapter 11, it says that the Antichrist is not going to be able to attack Jordan. It's not going to be able to destroy that place. So we believe this is going to be the place of safety for them. And how long are they going to stay here? There. Well, he tells us where she is nourished for a time. That's one year. And times, two years. And half a time, three years. Three and a half years. That's what it's going to be. So they're going to be there the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. The last three and a half years, this is what, what's going to be taking place there. So this is where the Jews are going to be in Petra. This is where the, Israel is going to be. Not the church. The church is nowhere on earth. The church is raptured. The church is in heaven at this time. We haven't even come back yet. So uh, we know that we're not talking about the church when we when we uh, talk about this. This is the sixth war. Now, we, we, we're not going to go through the seventh and eighth and ninth war right this time. We're going to cover those next time. And the reason is because it's going to take a little bit longer explanation to go through those, a little longer than than uh, we expect, so that we want to spend time on in, in this session. But uh, we will cover those next time, and we're going to cover the second coming of Jesus Christ, or at least start the second coming. That's when you and I and will follow Jesus Christ back down to earth. That's at the last wall, which is the uh, the uh, the eighth wall, uh, which is when Jesus comes to stop all of the wars, to put an end to all of it. So next time we meet, what we are going to do is uh, we do just a brief summary. We're going to pick up uh, the wars 7, 8, and 9. We're going to go through those as we did here today. And then we are going to go right into the second coming of Jesus Christ when he brings you and the church back with him. We're going to show what happens when we come back down to earth, when we land on earth, and what's going to be happening at that point. So, um, again, we thank you for coming with us. Let us just say a prayer uh, uh, as we conclude this study. Father, we are grateful that you've blessed us, that we could uh, talk more on eschatology, the study of biblical prophecy in the last days. Thank you for blessing us, bringing us through it, and helping us to learn more about what is in store for what is going to be happening, what is coming about very soon now as we see these things going on on the earth today. We thank, ask that you will help us to keep this knowledge and information and use it to glorify you and be a blessing to others. And just help us, Lord, to be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us and to do it with gentleness and respect. So we just thank you and ask that you will bless us and help us to keep these words in our hearts and meditate on them day and night. We give you all the glory and praise. We thank you and we do it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say amen.
So again, we thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming out with us. And uh, we look forward to continuing this study the next time. In the meantime, we will continue to pray for you, your family, and your loved ones. And we ask that you be safe. Uh, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. And by the way, uh, you can read through some of these scriptures that we went through today. We can't really cover them all and talk about them uh, in the full detail, but we give you enough information where you could pick up from there and continue to move ahead with the study and reading. And if you have any questions, please contact us and we'll be glad to accommodate you and assist you in your questions. We thank you and you be safe. God bless you.